um, we showed um, Tyndall, TMDL, uh, which is a, a whole new language um, uh, sh that ships as part of Power BI, uh, specifically as part of TOM, the tabular object model. Um, and it's a language that you use uh, to define uh, Power BI model metadata um, in a uh, in a in a code first experience, basically. So uh, this um, is an alternative to JSON uh, or Timsl, right? TMSL, the tabular model uh, scripting language. Um, we're now going from Timsl to Timdl. Um, and um, uh, why why a new language? Uh, because obviously, you know, that brings, you know, that requires new tooling, that requires people to learn syntax and all of that. Um, so, you know, it, it's not it's not cheap, right? It's, 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 uh, it's, it's not easy to just decide uh, a new language is needed. Um, but it really was needed because um, there are um, various shortcomings um, with and limitations with where we were before uh, the JSON-based language. And so the the overall the, the top um, objective here was um, to be able to support um, a really good source control and collaboration story around tabular models. Um, and um, when it comes to source control, uh, obviously we're talking text-based documents um, uh, where um, in an ideal world, you're able um, to make small edits in a text editor without requiring you know, some, some massive IDE or even Power BI desktop. Um, and where most importantly, you have a very neat way of uh, tracking changes uh, by uh, looking at diffs, right? And so, um, uh, so that's definitely something which we've got here. And uh, one particular complication, let's say, with Timsel uh, and, and with tabular models actually is that um, we have um, a mix of different languages, right? So just looking at this, um, uh, this is an M partition. So you can actually see there's a block here of M code which is obviously part of my uh, partition definition for my um, customer table in that case, right? Um, if I go to my sales table, um, I also have M here, but then I have uh, various DAX expressions um, uh, like this and that. Uh, if I go to time intelligence, I've got other DAX expressions because they make up my calculation group. So, you know, the particular challenge we have uh, when it comes to defining tabular model metadata is uh, we're, we're not just concerned with objects and properties and values. Uh, we also have to account for embedded languages, basically. Um, and um, if we want to be in a position where we can, uh, you know, do small edits in a text editor, um, we need direct access to those expressions. Um, we can't have... Um, we can't get the language in uh, in our way, basically, right? So um, let me show you what this exact same model used to look like in um, Timsel, uh, in JSON. Um, and uh, I can actually use a not yet released, uh, but to be released version of PBR Tools because PBR Tools already integrates Timsel. Um, so if I if I go in here, and use the PBI tools convert command like so. Um, there are quite a few options here. Um, the ones I want to point out, uh, sorry, let me, just, uh, let me just do it again. Ah, uh, here. Um, so uh, those are the ones I want to point out. Um, so basically the model serialization options have changed. Um, we now have default, raw, legacy, and Timdall. Uh, so uh, th th there are some new options in here, um, which means using PBI tools, you can choose. Um, do you want to have, oops, that's the wrong shortcut. Uh, 
that's the one. Um, uh, do, do, do you want to use Tyndall? Uh, do you want to use Legacy, which is basically what PPI Tools has uh, done so far? Um, do you want to use raw, which basically puts everything in one single file? So that's the equivalent of BIM, basically. Um, and um, if I put that to action, um, I can basically do convert to model. And then let's say, uh, give me, uh, there we go, right. Um, so th this is this is this is a shortcut actually, right? Uh, I've specified a model folder, uh, that, which in this case um, happens to contain Tyndall, um, and I specified um, a BIM file name as my um, target or my output path, and and from that uh, PPI tools infers automatically what I want to do, uh, namely that I uh, just want to convert the the model aspect of my PBX project. Um, and I want to convert it to a single BIM file, uh, and that's the one I've got here, right? So, and so let's let's do some side by side comparison here. You can already see, right? So this whole thing is what two thousand eighty six lines of code, right? Um, I've got everything in one file here, and then if I go to the uh, uh, if I go to the M uh, partition we were looking at earlier, we, we immediately see that this is in no way ideal with respect to uh, readability, with respect to being able to edit things, right? Uh, we've got things broken down into, uh, into a string array. We've got lots of um, additional characters, double quotes. Uh, we're, we're using lots of... Um, uh, um, uh, uh, escape, escape characters here, right? Um, you can even see that here we, we've got a, a special character uh, for a line break, right? So this is this is very far removed from uh, how you actually think about your model and from the fact that this happens to be M code that you actually want to look at and 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 work with as M code, right? You can't do that, um, and so. Um, Coming from that um, position, uh, it was clear that um, obviously one approach to making this one more approachable for source control would be what Tabular Editor does, uh, is to simply break it out, uh, you know, into um, into um, uh, multiple files. So uh, if I if I go here and I open that one and uh, find uh, where I currently am, which is this, that one, right? So I'm opening that file. And then if I go, oops, not save as, but save as folder. There we go, save to folder. Uh, so let me create um, a new folder here called a T. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. So, so this is one way of um, approaching the problem, right? Um, we've got um, a folder structure now um, that actually has quite a few nesting levels, as you can tell, but it means that every individual file we're looking at is substantially smaller, right? So that's great, right? That, this is way better than looking at um, 2,100 lines of code or so. But we still um, have the issue... Uh, for instance, me looking at this partition, we still haven't done anything around M. Uh, if I go to my um, calculation group and look at my calculation items, um, you can still see this is not really DAX, right? This is this is a JSON array um, with escaping and and whatnot going on there. So uh, one going one step further is basically we get to Tyndall where we're saying. Um, we have a, a whole new way of actually representing our model metadata, and um, and that's what we shipped here. So uh, Timno gives us two things. Uh, it gives us a format that um, is very lean, that is really focused on uh, just the, the bare minimum I need to represent in order to have a full representation of my model. 
a format that is human readable, a format that can be edited, and um, most importantly, a format that um, supports for embedded expressions. Uh, DAX, JSON, M uh, are examples, right? And then the other thing um, which is being shipped is uh, what Tabular Editor does, namely um, a, um, a standard way, and we've, we can see that here very nicely, um, to break out um, the various artifacts into a uh, into a folder structure, so that we actually have um, fewer files, and so that we have fewer risk uh, and scenarios where we could possibly have merge conflicts. Right. Um, uh, however, um, the Tyndall folder structure is a lot less granular. Uh, than the uh, tabular editor folder structure, at, at least when you um, tick all the boxes in tabular editor. The, um, so as you can see, um, one table is um, de fully declared in one file, right? And um, everything that uh, belongs to a table, so those are partitions, measures, columns, hierarchies, annotations, um, is, is in that file, but in a consistent and repeatable order, right? So if you if you load a model from Tyndall, then you make some edits in another editor and you save it back to Tyndall, um, it is guaranteed that um, the order of things uh, uh, within a document will not change so that it's very likely for you to get small diffs to, to you know, let's say you added a measure, uh, you will actually see um, you know, just an insertion and nothing else. So that's that's in a nutshell what Tyndall does, and I'm more than happy, you know, to to sort of go through the the syntax a little bit here and and point out a few um, uh, uh, details. A preview version of Tom will ship that anyone can use. Um, and uh, basically use uh, all the Tyndall serialization and deserialization features um, in their own applications. We've got full commitment from Daniel um, to put this into a tabular editor as soon as possible. Um, so when tabular editor today allows you to save to folder in the future, tablet editor save to folder will save to Tyndall instead of uh, a broken out JSON uh, file. And uh, PBI tools, um, same, right? Uh, you've seen I've, I'm already using a internal uh, uh, build of PBI tools that's fully integrated with Tyndall. I'm going to ship that um, as soon as uh, the uh, uh, you know Microsoft announcements are out there. So let's talk about let's talk about the syntax a little bit if, if you're interested. Uh, so let's go back to customer. Um, and also, let me show you two things here. So first of all, uh, something I'm very excited about. Look at this. Look at that. I'm in VS Code, but it knows I'm actually, uh, excuse the typo there. I thought we had fixed that. <laughs> um, it knows I'm actually um, uh, in uh, Tyndall in tabular model definition language mode. So uh, the, the the other thing which we're shipping is a VS Code extension, a VS Code language extension, um, which actually gives us um, full language support. Which is also why you know we we get some nice color coding here. Um, so that's coming, and that's going to be an open source project hosted by Microsoft, but uh, it will invite community contributions. Super excited! Is a is a really powerful. Um, uh, message as well, right? Um, uh, and um, the other thing is um, because the Tyndall syntax borrows heavily from uh, YAML, as you may have noticed, um, uh, which means uh, there is um, a significant, uh, which means in indentation in white space is actually significant. Uh, for, we get certain features for free. So, for instance, uh, VS Code, as you can see, automatically knows that we have um, uh, we've got a structure here, uh, and that we have logical blocks uh, simply uh, from looking at indentation, right? Which also means um, I can do something like that. Um, I can use VS Code shortcuts, which allow me um, to actually collapse uh, and expand um, certain indentation levels, right? Um, so if I 
if I uh, if I then collapse everything and then um, expand it again um, level by level, I've got a really nice view in this case of everything that's in my customer table, which is one partition and a bunch of columns. There we go, and that's it. Um, makes complete sense, um, uh, and um, hopefully the entire syntax is very intuitive. If I open up one particular column, you can see um, a column is an object. Objects have properties, right? Uh, we've got data type string, uh, source column, city, summarized by none. This is the auto summarization, right? Um, data category, cities. Uh, so um, those are hopefully um, names and keywords that people are familiar uh, to some people if you've used with Tom, uh, if you used Tom before. Um, and um, the um, uh, model is that any property which has its default value is not emitted, right? So brevity and uh, concise output was really keen. Um, so uh, columns, for instance, I think in total they have 60 or so different properties, maybe 40. Um, they are not all specified here. Why? Because all the others have their default value. So there's no need to specify them, right? Only the ones um, that um, in this particular case, right, source column city, obviously that is something that needs to be specified. So that's, um, that's one uh, design principle. And then the other one is around nesting, right? Um, everything in Tom is, is highly hierarchical. Um, so we've got the model at the top. Uh, underneath the model, we've got various tables. Underneath the table, we've got partitions, columns. Um, and underneath columns, we've got, for instance, annotations and, and other child objects, right? So whenever in Tom something is nested uh, in a hierarchy, uh, it, it means that in Tyndall, it's also nested with respect to how we're actually representing it. Um, and um, hopefully uh, that you know makes it very sort of intuitive and easy to read. Uh, and once again, what I said before, um, if you um, if you read a Tyndall project and then you save it back, it's guaranteed um, that you're always going to get a consistent order. Uh, for instance, for properties, just look at those. By default, they're always going to be admitted um, alphabetically. That way, it's completely predetermined, consistent, uh, and makes it um, a, a, a lot less likely that between changes, you're going to get arbitrary um, git diffs only because some stuff has um, uh, sort of randomly moved around. You know, that's, uh, that's in the spec and is guaranteed to not happen. Um, and uh, the other thing I want to point out, because also that's something we didn't man mention to show uh, during the demo, um, is uh, this. So I just talked about um, the importance of um, indentation, right? Um, and uh, uh, I also talked about uh, nested expressions. Uh, so M as an example, right? So now we, we do want to support a code first um, editing experience. Uh, so we, we do want to support uh, that people go in and make small edits to their M or DAX code, right? Um, now, if we, if uh, Timnu were, were very strict with respect to indentation, that could actually be quite, uh, be quite difficult, right? Because uh, uh, it could be um, problematic if you wanted to copy paste snippets of expressions from one document to another. If, uh, if those then weren't at the right indentation level, you could easily get into trouble. Um, for that very reason, when it comes to expressions, indentation is not enforced. So this document, if, if it looked like that, if I if I had copied this uh, M code in here like that, um, it is it, still completely valid. It doesn't change anything um, with respect to how this can be passed. Um, it would not be spit out like that uh, because uh, by default, uh, it's always prettified when we're serializing it, but you can, you can make uh, edits and, um, um, and um, they they will um, uh, you know they will be imported uh, accurately. And then the other thing is, um, let's just look at this expression, right? So this is my customer table. Um, remember, 
um, I actually converted this to a BIM earlier, right? So if we go to a table customer partition and look at that, look at this. So this is actually um, what the model looks like in BIM. Um, what do you see? Um, in my original document, which I started from, I had a lot of indentation um, for that expression, right? Here I don't. So that indentation is only for readability. Uh, it is emitted when I'm serializing and it's uh, removed when I deserialize, which means I always have the best of both, right? Um, I got nicely readable documents um, in my Tyndall, hence in source control. Um, but um, I don't then leak, um, you know, indentation that uh, comes from uh, just from readability into my model itself. I don't suddenly end up having all my DAX expressions uh, heavily indented when I happen to look at them in Tableau Editor or in Power BI Desktop or so, right? So that's another feature. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I can I can prove that uh, that's how it works. So let's let's just take this one as an example, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave some indentation here, but um, I'm gonna otherwise um, change it from the uh, um, from from the default we we had um, earlier, right? Uh, if if we look at uh, why is it not open this? Uh, ah, here we go. Uh, right. So if we look here um, and change this to a folder view, so we can ignore that one. Uh, right, so we can see, right, the only change I've made uh, for my entire model is actually indentation for this, right? Nothing else has changed. So if I go back um, and uh, convert that back, let's do demo two this time, right? Just so you believe me, it really is a, a new export, right? Here we go. So I've now converted it um, from, uh, from that modified file. Um, if I go in here and I open uh, demo two, there we go, that's the one. And then I go to tables, customer partition, there we go, no indentation, right? And again, the same applies um, to DAX uh, and everything else. Um, so if I go to my calculation group, here we go, nothing's indented, even though in my Timnit document it is indented. Okay, let's be really clear, right? Uh, I've I've just used PPI tools here. I'm not showing a PPI tools feature. I'm showing a Microsoft mm. feature, right? So everything I've just shown ships as part of uh, Microsoft's Tom libraries, um, uh, which will have a new serializer um, uh, for Tyndall, uh, yes. and that one uh, allows you to uh, construct an in-memory model from a Tyndall project. And it allows you to serialize an in-memory model back into your file system. So uh, the only thing that PPI Tools does here is to use those new libraries um, to give me a way to use that functionality. But uh, I'm not showing a PPI Tools feature at all. I'm showing what Microsoft is shipping as part of Tom. Any external tool, including PPI Tools and Tablet Editor, and hopefully many others, um, we'll be able to just use the Microsoft provided Tyndall format. So that's changing. Uh, it's also changing that um, uh, you're going to be able to uh, re read and write those files um, using um, any external tool using Microsoft supported um, libraries, right? Um, other things may be desired, but uh, I'm not at liberty <laughs> to talk about anything else. Um, and um, so just to show what this whole bit looks like end to end, um, I've got I've got a demo repo set up here, um, which actually has the exact same model in it what uh, we've just looked at. So we can see right here I've got my TMD files, expressions, relationships, I've got my various tables, including customer. Uh, we looked at before, obviously there's no syntax highlighting here because it's uh, um, Azure DevOps. That one does, doesn't know about um, Tyndall. Um, so I've got that and I've got it also set up um, 
with PPI tools deployments, which by the way are fully supported, right? PPI tools deployments for models um, only use public um, APIs and uh, they are fully supported. Uh, what is not supported is PPI tools um, compiling a PPIX file, um, so just to be really clear here. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so what do I have set up here? I've basically got a model definition using Timnil format, right? Mm -hmm. I've got a um, PPI tools deployment manifest called Contoso, where I'm using a data set deployment uh, uh, with a folder source. Uh, coming from my uh, model subfolder, right? And uh, I've got refresh set up here. I've got various parameters which are um, replaced uh, during deployment. Uh, in this particular case, I'm actually leveraging Azure DevOps built-in variables so that I uh, can um, uh, inject things like build ID and source branch and whatnot, right? And then I've got uh, three different environments defined development, UAT, production, and um, uh, and uh, uh, that will show us in a second how we can go end to end from doing, from making some um, manual changes um, in Timnal files uh, into the source control system and then via CICD triggers um, into uh, a Power BI workspace where my model resides and will automatically get updates uh, once I um, push something. So let's um, let's do that. Uh, <clears throat> right. Let's think about uh, what I may want to change here. Um, let me. Okay. Let, let's do something really lame. Right. Uh, I'm just going to do a hello world measure, uh, right? Because I, I, I didn't prepare for this. So I don't want to do something where I'm shooting myself in the foot. I hope you, I hope you will forgive me. Uh, Self-explanatory, right? I'm defining a measure. I'm inside my info table. Uh, the measure name is hello world. And here I'm using DAX, right? And double quote, mm -hmm. hello world, uh, that, that is basically a DAX string literal. And um, yes, to make um, to to respond to Mike's point, Timdal has first class support for um, uh, descriptions. Uh, you know, uh, most um, object types in in a tabular model um, support descriptions, which uh, will surface, for instance, in Power BI Desktop. Um, or in Power BI servers, and which many uh, or which some external tools actually leverage in order to auto generate a model um, documentation, right? There's Mark's model doc documenter as an example. Um, and um, I think uh, that uh, people need to document their models more <laughs> than they. <laughs> than they do today, right? So Tyndall actually has makes it as simple as, as you can imagine um, to achieve that uh, by providing very simple syntax. So if I put uh, three, uh, three forward slashes here, um, that basically um, introduces a description block for this particular measure, right? And then I can put anything in here. Um, again, some, just gonna do something really lame now. Um, uh, this is my end. Uh, you can this can be multi-line right so you can you can really go for it here and describe the whole thing um and so there we go um if i now save that and uh, go here i can see i've got uh, this change right look at this right so this <laughs> this is you know this is the new world right this is a really neat and clean diff which shows me precisely what i've done i've made an addition to to this table, there's no noise, nothing else, right? Just what matters. Um, and so let me just um, stage that. Let me also create a new branch um, because that's good practice. Uh, so let's call this uh, tool talk demo because why not? Um, and to uh, I really hope uh, I've got my credentials in here. I may not. Um, right. Okay. 
Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Uh, I don't have a com uh, right. So a commit message would be um, so edit um, hello world uh, measure. Right, there we go. So commit message. Right, so I got that, uh, and now uh, da, 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 fingers crossed. Ah, uh, oh no, uh, perfect. Actually, uh, yes, I, I, my uh, account is linked to my window, so I don't have to uh, get worried about entering passwords here. All good. Sorry, I should have kept that uh, internal. Um, and so cool. So here we go. So this is my project, and it will now tell me that it's um, detected a new branch, right? So it asked me to create a pull request for that. Um, I've got my environments linked uh, to branches. So if I um, uh, push something into UAT, that would make it well. That would put it into the UAT environment. Um, and um, I've wired this up um, using best practices so that um, anytime a, a pull request is created or modified, um, a, a deployment into my development environment is, is automatically generated, right? So if I go create here, um, everything else happens automatically. Um, there we go. I've got a new build queued. So this is... Um, uh, just firing up uh, PPI tools, and it's ultimately going to uh, deserialize um, my Timdal model, uh, and it's going to send it um, across um, into my Power BI workspace, which we're going to see in a second. Um, whilst we wait here, let me go there already. So this is uh, that, and then... I'm going for Timdal demo. Um, so this is the one we're expecting to update in a second, but obviously right now it won't have the head of world measure because I just created that. Um, so let's just give it a minute to initialize. Sorry. Right, here we go. So this is, this is uh, where the magic happens. PBI tools deploy is being invoked now. Um, I haven't, um, unfortunately, this is running on a Windows um, build agent rather than Linux, so it's slightly slower, but this is only because it's currently a, a private build of PBI tools. Ultimately, obviously, it's going to be a Docker image like all other PBI tools releases, and it's going to be much faster to execute. All right. So uh, we've got a connection to our XMLA endpoint. We're replacing parameters. And um, it's then going to do a refresh, which is actually um, automatic. So that should, uh, there we go. We're already done. So if I go to my workspace now, um, I've got a report linked uh, to the dev. Um, uh, to I've got a report linked to the dev model, and we can already see, just looking um, at my metadata here, this is now, right? This is 21st of March, um, and uh, uh, this is my local time, right? So, and you, we can also see that uh, this come from the, uh, this has been deployed from a pull request, uh, specifically pull request number 13, right? If I go back here and go to repos and pull requests, I've got this one, and look at that. This is 13, right? So this this is actually you know how we're injecting de uh, deployment metadata right into the model for full visibility in terms of what's going on in your tenant, right? Something I'm always preaching because that's something I feel very strongly about. Um, but let's make sure we can actually see the one addition I made. Look at this. I've got header world, and and now look at that. I'm hovering over, right? I'm very, oops, sorry, I'm very excited. I'm hovering over this um, and look what's going on here. I've got my description and uh, including a line break, right? So I decided um, to put a line break into my Tinder document, Power BI service even, um, um, honors that. And um, obviously just to finish, um, 
the demo uh, if I then put hello world, there we go. So now <laughs> hello world works. Um, so yeah, so this is end to end and hopefully um, a, uh, a, you know, gives you a good idea of um, where things are gonna be very soon um, once uh, you're all able, you know, to read some more documentation about it and uh, most importantly, um, either use this, you know, with tablet editor and um, uh, PBR tools uh, or build your own applications using Tom. Um, there, are, there are other things will be happening, but I'm going to get in trouble if I talk about that. 